Hey everyone, I'm on my way to record another video with Ash, but today's a special video because we hit 100k. Thank you to you guys. And I have a super surprise for Ash that she has no idea is going to happen. Um, but I think it's going to be fun. So, watch. Hola, hola. Hi! Oh my god, that looks We're so at 100K. cool. We're at 100k. 100k. In today's special episode, I want to first start by saying thank you to all of you, my wonderful virtual family, for helping us reach 100k. Thank you for all your support, your comments, your likes and for being such an important part of our journey so far. We aim to keep creating content for you as best as we can. So let's continue our adventure and see where it takes us. So, Alan surprised me with this fantastic chocolate creation and there's so much more to come. We're using this chocolate to make our dessert later and you know who's making it? My guest chef. So, Alan promised me when we reached 100k that he would be in front of the camera. So today, he's making his famous chocolate mousse. They got me my second date with my wife. So this chocolate was made by one of my best friends, Jordi Ferres, he's a chocolatier. And I want to thank you guys as well and for all your love and support. So let's go, let's cook. Let's make it. So for this mousse, we only need two ingredients. Whipping cream at 35%, dark chocolate 70%, and white chocolate. We're gonna start with the dark chocolate because it takes longer to melt on a double boiler. Then we'll start with the white chocolate a little bit after because if you melt it too quickly while you're waiting on this, it might seize and that you don't want. So while the chocolate is melting, we can whip the two creams into uh, yogurt consistency. So, Alan, is this the consistency we're looking for? Exactly. You don't want it too uh, whipped or too li liquidly. Okay. If it's too whipped, the chocolate will cut when you put it in there. If it's too liquidy, it won't have air and won't be cream, uh, creamy. Creamy the, enough. The, the, the mousse. Got it. So, we're going to do the exact same thing now with the other chocolate. Perfect. So, when it's at this point, you got to be careful when you're whipping it because if you over whip it, it takes 10 seconds over whip it. So you go check it, whip it, check it, whip it. Okay. Then, if for some reason I over whip it. Exactly. Then and put a little bit more cream or a little bit of milk and then check it. Okay. But be careful not to put too much milk because otherwise it will lose the air that you incorporated into the cream. Okay. okay. But as of now, this is the consistency we're looking for. It's perfect. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So they're both more or less exactly the same. Okay. So in this moment, you have to have everything ready. The chocolates are melted. You have a bowl where you're gonna put the two mousses together. You have the first bowl, which is the white mousse that you can use first. And then the dark mousse you have ready next by. So we're gonna start with the white mousse. Because it takes okay. longer to set, so you have more margin while you're mixing the dark mousse because the dark mousse is practically instantly. So it's very important you have everything in line and ready to go. Got it. Now, I'm going to put the, the chocolate in the very center of the whipped cream. Not on the edges, but in the very center. Mix the center, and when the center is mixed, then I will mix the entire mousse. Mm. No, then I'll use a spatula. You have to continuously mix in the middle without stopping one second. Otherwise, the chocolate will harden and it will cut. Mix, doing big movements. Now that the center has been mixed. If you do big movements from the beginning, the chocolate will cool very fast in the cooled whipped cream and it will cut into pieces of chocolate and it will not taste very good. The white chocolate 
you won't notice a big change in its consistency because it takes longer to harden. So you just mix it until you don't see any more ribbons of white where the... Uh, the cream hasn't mixed exactly. yet. Exactly. So basically, just until it's well incorporated and you don't see any more of the whites of the cream. Exactly. Got it. So now that it's done, it's laid. Now we have about 15 to 20 minutes for this. The dark uh, chocolate takes around four minutes to five minutes. Mm. So we are fine with this. Okay. So we'll put that aside. Now we're gonna do the dark chocolate. I always get nervous, even though I've been doing this for 14 years this point because the dark chocolate is what is easiest to cut because it cools so fast so like the white chocolate we're going to start in the middle okay mm -hmm. we're going to mix very fast while someone helps you pour in mm -hmm. and when you see the the whipped cream start mixing with the dark chocolate mm -hmm. you know that it's uh, not going to cut mm -hmm. right away then you can start mixing bigger but you have to first see the center of the bowl turning into mm, mousse okay okay ready yep go Faster, 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 faster. Faster, 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 faster. All of it, all of it, all of it. Don't stop, don't stop. In the middle, in the middle, in the middle. Now you can see how the chocolate did not break. You don't see little pieces of chocolate. Then do big movements to mix in the, the remaining whipped cream that has not been incorporated. And the darker, darker the chocolate, the faster it cools. So if you have a milk chocolate, because you don't like too strong, then you'll have more time. But generally, as a, a general principle, I like to do it fast, just to make sure. You want some of it that's left or not? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. When you don't see any more ribbons of chocolate or pieces of chocolate, you know it's all mixed. Now you have about five to 10 minutes to set the two chocolates together. Same with the white, they're most, more or less the same consistency. It's also very important this because um, if they're different consistencies, when you make the, the mousse at the end, the, chocolate, uh, the dark chocolate will be harder than the white chocolate, so it won't come out cleanly. So uh, we have both our chocolates ready. Mm -hmm. We just mix them. You don't want to take too long to do this part. Okay. First, we're going to put a base of dark chocolate, okay. white chocolate, dark chocolate, white chocolate and then again dark chocolate. And then whatever is white chocolate you have left, on top. Okay. And then with these three skewers, we're gonna mix them to nice. get a marmald effect. Cool. And then into the refrigerator. Cool. So you can start putting the dark chocolate, a couple spoonfuls at a time. Okay. This is good? A little bit more, because you have more dark chocolate in mm -hmm. there. That's enough. Now let's put some white chocolate. Do you want me to get a spoon? It might be easier because this is a little bit more runny. The white chocolate is always going to be more runny than the dark chocolate because they're more um, fat. But um, don't worry about that. As long as they're close enough, they'll be fine. So you're going to make a complete layer. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Some more? No, that's probably good. good. Now dark chocolate again. Yeah, this is You can start jiggling it so that it flattens out again, takes all the air out. Okay. The air bubbles. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit thicker. But that's because it's setting faster. Mm -hmm. When this sets, they should be more or less the same thickness. Mm -hmm. There's many mousses that use other kinds of techniques with gelatine, eggs, and eggs. all this, but I found the purest is the best. Actually, I tried making it a couple of times with egg and it's so tricky. The only tricky part about this mousse is that moment we have to mix. Because if you don't mix fast enough, the chocolate cools too fast and becomes pieces of chocolate in the, in the whipped mm. cream and that doesn't taste good. Yeah, that's not okay. a spread. Now we're going to put just one more spoon of white chocolate on top. And put it all around. There, that's right. You don't need to cover it. Now, with the three skewers, like this. Like three or four times, do this kind of movement. This way? Yeah, and then up, so that it, it breaks. This way? Exactly. And then a little bit more on the top. Exactly, a little bit more on the side where there's no chocolate. Until it looks like a nice marble without mixing it. Ah, Perfect. Okay. Yeah? It's done. 
Happy? Now about three or four hours in the refrigerator overnight and it'll be perfect. And I will show you now in a couple hours when we get this done, how to do the serving, which is the, my favorite part. So we're back here now. We have the mousse that's been in the fridge about three hours. And you said it's best to leave it overnight exactly. if possible. That way also the, the taste of the chocolate mixes better with the, the whipped cream. It's actually going to be better the second day as is the case of many desserts. Perfect. And so we're going to cut some strawberries up and put a little bit of sugar but right before we put it in the plate because if you put the sugar too early, all the water will come out. Mm -hmm. So it's important to do it and then put it in the plate. Okay. So we're going to serve the mousse in like an egg form using a hot spoon with some hot water. You roll it and we'll put it in. So let's do it. So before we serve, you need a bowl of hot water. Exactly. And then a spoon to dip in it so the spoon gets exactly. hot. A and serving then... uh, a tablespoon okay. is good. Size. Okay. And then we'll put it right on top of the fresh fruit. Okay. And then decoration of a little bit of mint, other berries if you have them, and then it's ready to eat. Yum, let's do it. So we're going to serve the mousse now. And go ahead and put some uh, fresh strawberries here with the lightly sugared, okay? Mm -hmm. And then put a little bit of blueberries, raspberries and blackberries on, on the outside of the plate. So the way it's very important to have the water extremely hot, mm -hmm. practically boiling. Mm -hmm. Okay, you put the spoon in a couple minutes so it heats up the spoon because mm -hmm. if it's a metal spoon, it's gonna take a little bit. Okay. You don't need to dry the spoon because that's gonna start cooling it down. You just shake off the extra water. Okay. And then you're gonna do an egg form like this. Okay. Nice. You take it out, okay. put it on, and you slide. Okay. Out. And then you can do that. Every egg will be even better because the first egg, because it's flat, will be a little bit ugly. But mm -hmm. the next three, four, five eggs will go just point it like that. Do you want to try? Perfect. Yeah, let's try it. So, dig in so basically this we're rolling it into a shape of an egg. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then at the last moment, you go underneath. And then dip it in. Right. And then on the fruit, we're going to just put a little bit of mint. Nice. And then So now is our favorite part to try the food. And finally, we get We eat it together, exactly. Eat it together. Okay. Right. Here Thank you go. You. All your effort. It looks beautiful, by the way. Thank you. Okay. So you want to eat a little bit with the strawberries and the mousse at the same time. Okay. Bye. Mmm. Every single year. I love it. It's so light. It's like it's vanishing in my in my mouth. Wow. It melts in your mouth. The chocolate has a nice uh, mm. bitter taste, and the white chocolate does a contrast. And then you Perfect. have the fresh fruit that also gives a, a jolt of sweetness. I know, I love it. Oh, I love it. Oh, you guys will definitely love this. I mean, it took two ingredients to make this. Amazing, really amazing. Now you know why I got a second date with my wife. <laughs> oh, I understand. <laughs> I know. So when you guys make this, don't forget to tag me at Infinity Platter on Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on all the future recipes and adventures. See you next week. Bye.